Hey, what's up? Straight Bell here, and I'm going to tell you a little story about how I almost died in a car accident. So it was the summer of 2006. It was about, I think, the third season of Drake and Josh. We were right in the middle of it, and I had this 1966 black Mustang. I got it when I was 17. I loved this car. It was uh, black with black and white pony interior, and, and I, I just loved this car. And my friend came over to my house. We decided we wanted to go for a run down at uh, Zuma Beach, which is about an hour away from where I was living in Studio City at the time. And we drive and we get down there and it's a beautiful day at the beach and we're, you know, we go for our run and it's about six o'clock, the sun's going down and, and we decide to, uh, you know, we're, we're good, let's, let's head home. And we get in the car and as we're driving, uh, we decide, hey, instead of going back home, let's drive into Santa Monica right here and, and go get some dinner and, and hang out a little bit. Well, as we're driving, I, I looked at him, I looked at me, I was like, you know, we're, we're sweaty, we're in workout clothes. So I said to my friend, I said, hey, instead of, of heading into Santa Monica, why don't we just go back home, shower, you know, change our clothes, and just eat somewhere by the house. So I, I, I got into a left-hand turn lane to make a U-turn, and as I did, we were stopped at a red light, and I got my foot on the brake and I'm, I'm looking, looking out in the distance and I see these two headlights just coming full speed directly at us. And I, I start to, you know, I, I start to look and see, am I on the wrong side of the road? Is it, I mean, this guy, is he, no, he's clearly on the wrong side of the road. You know, I can see the double yellow lines and I know I'm in a, I'm at a red light left turn lane. And this guy is just coming at full speed directly towards us. And I, I look at my friend and I say, hey, is this guy not stopping? Is he going to stop? Is he going to stop? Is he going to stop? Whoa, whoa. And he just plowed right into us head on at like 50 miles an hour. I mean, full speed. And I immediately was thrown into my my steering wheel, which was at the time made with, uh, it was just wood and, and, and steel basically. And so it, it was like a baseball bat smashing my face. And I, I, I broke my, I, I could immediately feel my jaw just shatter in my mouth and, 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 and teeth start flying out and I start, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking around and, 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 and we're spinning. I mean, we started to spin out of control and I hear other cars screeching around and I, I don't know how I didn't pass out, but I, I was, I was conscious the whole time. I remember everything and, and I start, I start spitting more teeth out and we're, we're spinning and we're spinning. And then finally we slam into this fence that just happened to be there because it was blocking some construction. This was on uh, the Pacific Coast Highway in, uh, in about the Malibu area. And there was fencing put up to block the view of some construction that had been going on. Otherwise, that fence wouldn't have been there and we probably would have just continued and tumbled down the, the, uh, the hill. And, and, and so luckily for us, we, we slam into this, this fence and I immediately, you know, I, I just turned 19 years old. In my mind, I go, oh, I must have... I mean, this has to be my fault. I must have done something wrong. I, there's, there's got to be something, you know, something. So I start getting so nervous and I jump out of, and I am covered in blood. I mean, the blood coming out of my face, it's like you turned on a water hose and it's just blood, just blood, just gushing out of my face. I feel this cut across my, across my chin and I, I kind of feel around with my tongue trying to put my jaw back into place and it would just crumble right back into my, into my mouth. And I was, I, I went to feel around with my tongue and my tongue came out of my chin. So it, the, the cut just went all the way through. And I, 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 I jump out of my car and I kind of stumbled towards the other car to see if everyone's okay. And, and you know, my car, my car is hanging there. And I go, you know, is, there, is everyone, is, there, is everyone okay? You know, and I, 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 it's not funny, but it, I, I guess it kind of is now. But um, I, 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 I was there. I was saying, is everyone okay? Is everyone okay? What happened? What happened? And I could see the other driver, and, and he was kind of looked like he was waking up and, and really dazed. 
he was okay, no injuries for him because he was in this big Mercedes with airbags and, and so he was fully protected. Um, but the, the, the people who had gotten out of the other cars to help looked at me and said, no, 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 he's fine. You need to go lay down. You need to, you need to go sit down somewhere. You, you need to go sit down. And so I found this bus stop that was, that was really close by and I just sat on the bench and I leaned over and I, I, I just continued to spit teeth out. All of these are, 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 uh, are fake because they, they, they just completely got shattered. And I was just spitting teeth out and blood was just gushing out of my face. And I sat and I waited for uh, help to arrive. Um, and so after a period of time, the, the ambulances and police and everybody started showing up and they put me on a stretcher and they were taking my shoes off and you know squeezing my toes and touching parts of my my hands and my legs and you know do you feel this do you feel this do you have feeling in this and yes luckily i was uh i was able to feel everything um and uh, i had fractured my neck I had, a, I had a hairline fracture in my neck and and my jaw was broken in three places i had knocked out the majority of my teeth were gone and uh, and i had this big huge laceration uh, on my chin that went all the way through. And so they lift my, my gurney into the, into the ambulance and take me off to the hospital. Well, when we got to the hospital, it was kind of strange because they just kind of left me in the waiting room and dropped off a clipboard and said, um, car accident victim, and the ambulance drivers left and went on their way to go to their next call. And I just waited and waited and sat in that, was laying in that waiting room with my neck brace on, having no idea what was going on, just waiting. And finally, some nurses came by and picked up my chart and, and looked at the clipboard and, and, and realized, oh, you're at the wrong hospital. So, of course, I'm in shock. I'm like, Where, how could they drop me off at the wrong hospital? Well, we had to then call another ambulance and have the drivers come in and pick me up and lift me right back up into the into the ambulance and this is before i've gotten anything i mean this is just directly from the accident i don't have any you know medicine or anything in me yet and so i'm just you know i'm trying to just keep it together and they lift me into the ambulance and i head to the correct hospital and so i get to the next hospital they wheel me into this area, and luckily there was a, a surgeon on call, and uh, we had to wait for you know I don't know how long it took him to to arrive, and then and finally he showed up, and and it was really crazy because I had you could see the nerves in my uh, in my chin as if you held a mirror, and I was looking, and I was like they looked like you could see them moving, like a little like sea an anemone, an enemy, enemy, sea enemy. I think it's called anyway uh sea enemy and they it was like they were like the nerves were like moving around <laughs> like this it was it was wild so they came in they they cut my you know they cut through they're like do you care about this shirt i looked down i mean i am covered in blood and they go do you care about this shirt i remember it was it was an elvis shirt and i actually really did like the shirt um but you know what am i going to do with it now and so i'm like no and they just cut right through it, got it off of me. And then uh, the surgeon started to go to work and, and sewed me up and, and put the stitches and it was layers. He had to do, you know, I think I got something like 7,000 stitches. It was like seven layers of 1,000 stitches each. It was like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, or maybe it was like four, four or 5,000 stitches, something like that. But it was, it, that's how they kind of had to sew it up. And so I got sewed up. Actually, before the surgeon started working on me, that's when people started to uh, to arrive. So it, it was really cool, you know. Uh, everybody immediately started getting phone calls and and all of that. And so so Josh showed up and Miranda and her family and and then my family started to arrive and and producers from the show and Jonathan, you know, who plays Walter, arrived and and Nancy and and everybody showed up and and kind of were standing around my bed. Um, you know, so, so that was really cool. Everyone was really supportive and, and, and scared, really, you know. Um, so anyway, I ended up uh, getting transferred and, and I was moving into the OR so that they could actually operate on my jaw and put everything back together. And as I was laying there, I mean, I knew, I, I, I know I was out of it, but 
I was listening to the, the nurses and they were making a checklist. And I heard them saying, you know, do you have the this and the that? And nothing stood out to me. I don't know what any of this hospital jargon is. And, um, but I heard the nurse say, and do we have the cocaine? I, I must have heard her wrong, right? I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I'm just completely out of it. I, 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 I'm, I, I don't know what I just heard, but I'm pretty sure I just heard her ask. I, was, you know, I know it's late, but is, it, like, is that for the doctors to stay awake? I don't know what this is, right? So I, I, I have to ask, and I, I, you know, I get the, the nurse over, and, and I go, who, who? <laughs> this is how I was talking, you know. I go, who, uh, did I hear you say that? Do you, do you have a co cocaine? And she said, yes, because your jaw is so broken and that's where we're going to be operating, we're not going to be able to put a breathing tube in your mouth, down your throat. So what we're going to have to do is go through your nose and come down this cavity and then go into uh, to put the breathing tube. And to numb that area, what we use is this pharmaceutical grade, 100% pure, like, liquid cocaine and I just I mean I just I had no idea how to react to that I, I was so confused but we got into the OR they laid me down on the operating table and the anesthesiologist had arrived and, and, and put the IVs in my arm and I started to go under and I, I started getting you know everything started getting foggy and I started to 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 fall asleep and but right before I fell asleep here comes the doctor with this little bottle of clear liquid that he puts to my nose and he just squeezes and I feel it all go up and through, I mean, basically just straight to my brain. So I've got this IV with anesthesia putting me to sleep, but then I've got this rush of whatever, it, you know, going, making me like, what is going on? And, and then finally I end up uh, falling asleep. And the next day, well, I think it was the next day. I don't, I don't know. The time was meant nothing to me at this point. So, so I, I, I think it was a few hours later, and they were wheeling me into my my room, and I and I was waking up, and my jaw was completely wired shut. So I, I woke up like this with my jaw totally clenched, not just you know wired shut. It was cl like bite down as hard as you can right now. You feel that? That is how my jaw felt when I woke up. And I, did, I was missing all of my teeth. And uh, they wheeled me into my room and I, I, was, I was in my room. So, so now I, I was wired shut. The laceration was sewn, was sewn up. So uh, I was pretty much done with surgery. And I, I think I maybe stayed in the hospital for two or three days. Then I was released and I went home and my, by the time I got home, my face had swollen to, I mean, I'm not kidding. It was like out to here. It was, it was just so, so weird looking. And, 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 um, so I got into my house, I laid in bed and, and, and I started to recover. Um, and I had to be on an all liquid diet because my jaw was wired shut. So the doctor would say, oh, just throw some uh, hamburger meat and some ketchup and blend it up and liquefy it and it'll taste like a hamburger. I'm like, ew, no. And, and he's like, yeah, throw some spaghetti into the, you know, just liquefy some spaghetti and it'll taste like pasta, you'll be great. I'm like, no way. I mean, I just couldn't, I couldn't grasp that and it just sounded so disgusting to me. So I ended up just living for the next three to four months on these little yogurt drinks that uh, were the only thing that I could get down and, and, and stomach. I had lost so much weight so I was super skinny, but my face was huge. So I kind of looked like I kind of looked like Quagmire from 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 Family Guy, basically. And I, uh, you know, I just started to started to heal. And uh, I would by by month two, I was able to kind of get out of bed and and pick up my guitar and start you know playing a little bit. And I would try to sing and. I sing like this, you know. I, I was I was really worried because I had no idea what I was gonna look like after this. I had no idea if I was gonna be able to sing or if my jaw, how my jaw was gonna work. 
Finally, about four months later, I went to go get them, uh, got, went to go get my jaw unwired. I started to slowly be able to open it and it would crack and pop. So anyway, after some rehabilitation, to make a long story even longer, um, after some rehabilitation, I was able to go back to work. And I couldn't believe it, but they, they let us come back, which was really great for all of the cast and crew and everybody to come back to work and, and have their jobs again. <laughs> but, okay, so the first episode back from Drake and Josh was my dinner with Bobo. So I've just been recovering for about four months. My jaw has just healed, finally healed, and they hand me an orangutan, right? So now... I have to, for, for a week, I have to, to, to work with this orangutan that's basically like a two-year-old, just arms flailing, hitting me in the jaw, hitting me in the chin. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, I'm, I'm so nervous to hold this thing because I'm, I'm so, my jaw is so sensitive. I feel like if I just barely touch it, it's just going to shatter again. But luckily, we made a great episode. You know, the rest is history. But, uh, but yeah, so if you watch that episode of My Dinner with Bobo, you can, you can kind of see how skinny I am. And, and I think you can still see, like... Uh, the 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 scar was pretty fresh in that one, so you can see all of that. But yeah, it was uh, it was pretty crazy, and that's the story on how I uh, almost died in a car accident. Hey, if you like this video, like and subscribe. Press that bell, get a notification every time a new video pops up.